Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Weirdos at Home. What's going on, everybody? Sitting to my right is the heart and soul of Weirdos at Home, who I met, Tara Brown, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sam Slade. I'm not sure if I'm ready to re-enter the world yet. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, tonight, we have a very special guest. Uh, comedian Sam Narani is here. Yes! She's, uh, getting back out, out there. She's she's in a undisclosed fancy suite <laughs> somewhere in downtown Austin. Uh, we hear she is bunker, actually. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We're so stoked to have you. And how have you been? How has the quarantine been for you? It's over, apparently. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's nice to, like, not wear pants all day. But I don't know. I kind of miss other people a little bit until I interact with them. Then I'll be like, fuck this. So. It really has everyone weighing options of like, what do I really value in life now? <laughs> is it human connection or is it elastic waistband? Because I'm still holding on to the elastic waistband. I'm, hold time being. I'm holding on to a TV that gets all the apps. Yes. <laughs> and, and a PlayStation. Uh, Sam, I don't know what your what your take is on video games, but the day of the lockdown last year, for the first time in like 15 years, I bought myself a PlayStation. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's the only reason I survived through through the pandemic uh, was being a 35 year old man gaming like Ooh. a fucking 12 year old. <laughs> Did you get like really emotional? And earlier today, oh he, yeah. No, no I don't. <laughs> no I don't. You're not uh, emotional. Earlier today, whoa. <laughs> All right. Uh, earlier today he figured out how to get online with like I guess local kids that are still playing these games all over the world and they're talking shit to each other all throughout the afternoon so I don't have a microphone Sam <laughs> so I have to sit there and take it and as a comic you know that's like the fucking worst thing ever 12 year olds are heckling me it's a close game I'm not out of it but I'm getting heckled and I can't say shit because I threw the thing away thinking when am I ever going to set it up to play with kids and here we are on the eve of the world reopening. And I'm like, I can't go out. Narish wants best of seven. I'll be inside. Maybe it's better that you don't have a headset. But you I got mean, a little bummed out. You got a... <laughs> I don't know if a bunch of kids yeah, here. Like... I think we, uh, no, you're exactly right. I mean, Terry will vouch as soon as we heard the, uh, the 12 year old in Morocco talking shit. Mm -hmm. uh, Tara, we, we made sure that's what we heard and she was like, I don't think this is good for you and then therefore for us. <laughs> I was like, haven't we had a bad enough year? Do we really have to do this right now? <laughs> uh, so PlayStation or Xbox, if you're going to have to break up with somebody, which one do you break up with them over first? Uh, neither. I play Mario Kart Tour on my phone. <laughs> well, he's, he's, that, that's very admirable of you for being honest we appreciate your honesty here weirdos uh should no longer be at home yeah uh, where do we go uh but you were still an uh og candy crusher oh yeah i crushed to relax uh do you think you could hold your own on mario no it's been too long i think the last time i played mario kart was probably 2002 what do you what do you yeah. play? That, oh, you, you play it on your phone. Can you link up with other people, or do you have to uh, get your allowance first for that? I I think you can link up with other people. Like I have it. Okay, so I'm trying to earn all the badges in there, and I've only made two friends who don't play anymore. And I can get a full badge if I make five friends, and it's just sitting there mocking me for the last year and a half. So. Well, uh, Sam Narani, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming on the show tonight. <laughs> 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 She's like, whatever, I'm in a fancy suite downtown. Take it or leave it. I can jump on this bed as soon as this is over. I got shit to do. <laughs> uh, uh, what's it like being, uh, you know, being somebody around the Austin comedy scene for, uh, you know, four or five, six years or so? Hang on, our animals are about to uh, murder each other, deliverance style. Who's going to be the pig tonight, guys? Who's going to be Burt Reynolds? So what's it like now having your town and your scene being invaded by uh, by not, not all right comics from LA. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's weird. I will say I've been going to a lot of the mics and every couple weeks, 
somebody that's like super professional from like LA or New York will yell at us for being dumb children. And it's the best. I love it so much. Uh, I, I've heard if you if you're yelling at an Asian comic, that doesn't go well for you around here this week. Oh no, no, <laughs> that's only Asian, only Asian. That's like our hard cut off. But we can <laughs> still you can still yell any other alt right stuff you want, right? And then make people subscribe to Spotify. Is that still a thing? <laughs> yes, or their Patreon. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'll put your name at Austin. <laughs> Only ha handle one uh, crisis at a time, so I think we're we're obviously honing in on who was who was uh, earlier. It this was year? Uh, it, it was Tony Hinchcliffe yeah. last last weekend, two weekends ago. That's right. We had Leo Garcia on the other night. He mm -hmm. did not have anything uh, uh, nice. Get a lot of constructive criticism <laughs> from these guys coming in. I'll say that very positive uh, constructive criticism. Like just stop what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. Uh, this is the last place, didn't you think, maybe three, four years ago, you know, when you're out doing mics in this town, Sam, uh, which uh, I just love being able to say that, like I'm not a crazy person talking to myself, uh, that this would be the last town that the alt-right comics would move to knowing that we don't really play that? I, I don't I know, man. Say. Like, but I mean, Austin's always had people coming through, right? Like the tech guys and whoever the fuck else. So it... Comedy was, I guess, part of the deal. Eventually, comedy would have been filtered through. So You're, I think I, I'm just kind of like, this sucks, but I'm rolling with it. <laughs> well, that's what you got to do, because we all know the best is going to continue to rise like a good Rocky montage. Mm -hmm. You know, all the rest of the losers are going to get by the wayside. And we'll have guys, you know, 10, five years from now being like, I moved to Austin back in the boom in the pandemic. <laughs> I, could, I had a production deal with Fox in L.A., but I told them to take a hike. Uh, that's my one man show. Thanks everybody for coming since I took the fucking air out of the room. He's been working on that all quarantine. Don't you actually? <laughs> it's a it's a weird place where a bunch of uh, uh, alt right dudes stand up, no matter where you're from. I mean, I think too many are coming too fast. I think it's just gonna be a bunch oh, of oh, burst. Oh yeah. And uh, then it's gonna be super woke all over again. The cycle will start all over. On a scale of one to ten, Sam, how woke are you? Oh. uh... 10, I guess. I'm, I'm going to take the 10. I'm going to take the 10. I'm, I'll take the 10. I'm gonna let you guys, as women of color, I'm going to let you guys answer first, and I'm going to say exactly what you guys say. <laughs> and that's right. I'm not a moron. I've learned from the former guy. I will say, having lived with me for about a year now, a little over a year, you've become very woke. Woker. Woker. More woke. Now, was I not that woke to begin with, or no. do I just not like? No, I think I like to play not woke when that was when 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 every day wasn't about survival. You weren't very woke. <laughs> well, yeah, can you give me? I I've always voted Democrat. I've always considered myself a pretty diehard liberal. Yeah. And I, and I think that may be not cool in the Austin comedy scene for taking a side. You're more woke now. I'm more woke now. <laughs> uh, do you have a futurist female shirt in your closet? Uh, I. I have a y'all means all shirt. I'm taking away some woke it's points. In Here, what the hell? It's a, it's rainbow. <laughs> it is a rainbow y'all means all does shirt. That, does that count? We, we have him locked down on pride. I think we need to get him more on the feminist issues. Wait, 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 wait. I'm like, I'm like useful Alan Alden. You guys can drill me all you want, but give me a give me a feminist issue, and I'll, I'll tell you where I'm at or if I'm on the other side of it. I, I uh, Which okay. I won't be, because I'm a feminist. <laughs> Well, there's a pretty big sweeping abortion law that was just passed in Texas. All right. Now, I didn't go down to the Capitol and protest, but <laughs> in my defense, neither did you two or Wendy Davis. <laughs> okay? I'm, so I'm going to have to just call not you guys on out. <laughs> it's not what it was eight years ago. It's not quite as in as it was. I uh, posted, I, I'd like to troll sometimes whenever, uh, like Ted Cruz, sometimes mm -hmm. I get really drunk and like get on Facebook and troll him. And isn't he fun to troll? <laughs> if you troll him enough, uh, you might end up president. Ooh. It worked the last time, didn't it? What, uh, uh, Sam, what, what is your big issue? Uh, it's weird because I've said this in the mirror to myself so many times. Sam, what is your big issue with Ted Cruz? I don't like his beard. I but, want him to shave. <laughs> but, but the big shave. problem is the beard. <laughs> 
A beard means you are a grown ass man, a real person. All right. He's a child with his daddy's beard. He's got okay. pubes like glued to his face. I don't care for it. Like a Halloween costume. It's very pretending. It's, it's very real. fat Wolverine. It's very fat it's cosplayer Wolverine. Wolverine. <laughs> It is terrible is what it is. How did you get through the freeze here a couple months ago, Sam? Uh, with a lot of crying and complaining. So I did it. That was uh, that was our tag team wrestling name coming out of the freeze. Yes. Ooh, Ooh right. lagging and complaining? <laughs> we, we actually uh, did you have running water? We, we had oh, running ahead. water. Oh, sorry. Uh, we had running water for a little bit, and then the lights went in and out. We're like about an hour away from Austin, where we're staying. So it it was okay. Like at the end of the day, we still had like we had flashlights and and a little bit of a generator. So we were doing okay, <laughs> but we didn't have any pipes bust, which is Thanks. I'm very very grateful for. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you really get to know somebody that we we have now said this with every guest who has been on the show this year. Really get to know somebody when you're having to fill up buckets and count. Well, how many times do you think you're gonna have to flush the toilet today? <laughs> so you go out like three or okay, let's let's set for four, I guess. If you think four, I mean that's really how it got around here. It was rough, we, very scary. <laughs> we learned a lot. Did you guys get weird about what you were eating for dinner while the power and everything was out? Yes. I, oh, yes. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She'll, she's going to, you know, Tara is not a comic. So she sometimes isn't going to, you know, say stuff she would say if we weren't recording. But oh, oh, we would lay out the, the big uh, Santa Claus bag from 7 Eleven <laughs> of all the snacks and junk food and be like, okay, in a hierarchy of flushes to more, less flushes, what are we going to eat first? That's exactly right, Sam. You have to strategize. I was like, things with least amount of fiber. I don't care if I have an impacted colon at the end of it. We don't need to ruin the bathroom. <laughs> Whatever it takes. I just I just took a Slim Jim and put it in my butt for a couple of days. Man, it was, it was hard time. <laughs> I think I think that's about, I think one more awful one-liner like that, and it's going to be a conversation around the red table with you two, but I'm going to have to just hit it out. No, it's basically a meat tampon, Tara, <laughs> that he was using for his butthole, and I that just keeps all the hunger away. <laughs> it's an old trick, I know. I, I get it. It's an old army trick. It's like, I I'm fully aware. And that's, that's why you always go with the sweet teriyaki, too. The spicy yeah. one isn't going to work out. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, uh, we've had equal number of, of men headliners and women of color headliners making poop jokes on our podcast this week. It's a trend. That Look I at that. Look at never that. That's, the point. <laughs> That's the Joe Biden era, folks. That's the power of look, folks. That's right. Did you find it a little abrupt when we just re-released back into the world like stray dogs yesterday? Kind of, but we're in Texas. We've been like, I don't know if you guys have been out very often, but a lot of people are just kind of like, what? With the mask thing, like we're all walking around with our naked ass faces everywhere. <laughs> we locked it down pretty hard. Uh, we're pretty far north, so we've been able to kind of like seclude. And we have, have like four grocery <laughs> stores within walking distance. Like we never leave. <laughs> I love I love it between Sam and Tara to to spark one bit of color. It just keeps going back to you. so. We got to just go back on to how far north we are from downtown <laughs> and how safe we are. <laughs> Let me tell you how great it is. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I hate it. <laughs> have, you had a, uh, have you had an active shooter close in the neighborhood yet? We've had, uh, we've had one and a half. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, <laughs> I thought somebody would build on that. Uh, uh, it's just kind of crazy. Just so, so just just in case you're watching this, you're playing at home. We're, we're hardcore anti-abortion bill passed. Yes. Okay. Uh, we did probably nothing about the electoral grid. No, but I doubt it. Okay. I asked you because you work for a nonprofit. You you deal with the legislature. Uh, uh, what what else? Oh, we're handing out guns to everyone. That's right. Ooh. Texas. And 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 Joe is like, I guess have your summer. Yeah, everybody's free. Go, pull out. Exactly. All right. Well, wasn't he mentioning how he wanted like everything back to normal by like summer or winter this That's year? July fourth. He was really shooting for. He likes these big uh, commemorative holidays, so I think he is wanting 
everything to be back to normal by July 4th. He wants all the troops back before the 20th anniversary of 9-11, which is in September. So mm -hmm. it's very, I think we're getting to know Joe Biden and like- He's kind of anal about anniversaries. He is very right? anal about anniversaries. <laughs> Do you think he's trying to get the troops be back before the 9-11 anniversary as kind of a little slide to the Browns that the troops are invading right now? <laughs> Yeah, it's okay, I'm one of the Browns. I can say that. I can say that. Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> Safe space. Uh, uh, no, I think I think Joe is big on uh, on. He's kind of as he's getting older, he's turning into a hallmark president, mm -hmm. right? You know, he's going based on all that shit that comes up that we roll our eyes. National Taco Day, all that shit. You know, he's celebrating his ass off, and not the way Trump did. He's going all in. <laughs> uh, uh, we were kind of surprised. It just kind of felt like we were now all cut loose back into the world it was uh it was very cool to hear that and i want to know what your take is and your take on this i was convinced that he's allowing us to have a little bit of summer before the aliens show up <laughs> based on the ufo news that's been coming down the pike and please back me up on this because i've been keeping you updated i would have to agree with you uh there's been a lot y'all if y'all aren't paying attention <laughs> just google it i mean it's there it's there and it's not Conspiracy okay. theory, it's not uh what national inquiry. It's not, it's not Alex Jones. It's CIA. What the fuck are talking about? It if they, you wanted they, to dig for it, it's there. So I have, agree. There, there's like a I think either American Airlines or some major airline, their pilots are coming out now and going, Yeah, we saw some crazy stuff. Here's a bunch of details. It's like, what? Yeah. You can't say that out loud. Everyone thinks you're insane. Also, everyone, they've changed. It's not even UFO anymore. That's not even what they're calling it. They've changed the name. That's how serious they're taking it. It's now aerial. Uh, it's UAP. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. phenomena. Wait that a minute. Way, when you look up UFO, you know, uh, there's no news. Mm -hmm. You are telling me that those guys haven't even landed here yet officially. And they've already got a name change? That's amazing. Yeah, wow, know. Biden, you are doing some stuff. <laughs> the PR department they must have. Must well, this, well, well, to be honest, I think that the name change happened last year when they put out the tapes under Trump, and then he got scared. He made Space Force. No plan for it. But apparently from the stuff we watched, uh, uh, we, were, we were so very impressed. I just puked all over myself. <laughs> we were so very impressed by uh, the Space Force boot camp we uh i'm just so excited to spit in someone's mouth after the announcement uh with the space camp boot camp you were very impressed were uh, you not? yeah were... we saw some youtube video where it just like army boot camp or marine boot camp the space force have to go through it all too but it's all these like indoor kind of kids like having to go through all the push-ups and the pull-ups and the running <laughs> there's a movie about this right there is there? I have no idea. The Mighty Ducks. <laughs> Where uh, they play there's... hockey against a, an invading alien force. Yes. Then... Yeah, yeah. And then Charlie Sheen has to show up because brother uh Space Jam? Space Jam is a my... it is about an invading force. <laughs> uh uh, but I think I think what part of my interest as the the closet conspiracy theorist uh or UFO kid, which we can get into, would be the uh the fact that then they put Kamala in charge of all of space, knowing that she's the most with it, smart, on the job person there is. And I, I kind of that raised my attention to put the vice president in charge of space command. <laughs> I mean, is that, I mean, I don't. I mean, I, tell us in my mind, I have to imagine if I want a world leader to meet with for the first time with an alien, You're I great. trust Kamala. I think Joe's gonna be too. Uh, what well, fuck you look nothing like ET? <laughs> yeah, Joe's gonna do the weird dad jokes, and we're gonna get blasted. He's gonna so. do this to ET. Yeah. <laughs> it smells nothing like phone at home. I gotta tell you. They don't even have noses. They won't even get it. They will not know it. Yeah, but I'll get a good whiff of it though. <laughs> <laughs> Something he will do will be interpreted as some sort of threat, and it will be bad for us. Oh no, that's what that's all. Why he picked her, Mamala? Oh. Mamala's gonna get like a a summer camp started. We're all gonna do getting to know you games. We're all gonna be fast friends, getting on the same page, team building activities. It's gonna be great. 
So we're going to, basically, we need to make an alliance with another one of these planets before shit hits the fan. Well, where else are we going to go when we um, turn this place to shit? <laughs> I might have to do like, uh, we're going to have to do like a re redo of integration, except good this time, mm -hmm. but between humans and aliens. Oh. Maybe or, I haven't even thought about that thing. What about the fucking immigration problem when aliens show up? We can't even deal with Mexicans in this state. What are we going to do? There is I know it's an 80s joke, but... There's something that tells me that no one's trying to stop and stay here. They're coming to either help us... To pick people up. Take us, help us. Maybe they're us from the future. We don't know. But I don't think we're going to have any problems with anybody trying to like settle here on Earth. Uh, I think we've pretty much messed it up. Comedian Sandorani, are they are they us from the future or are they the <laughs> Mighty Ducks? Go ahead. Uh, they're probably the Mighty Ducks, but what if what if we're just like that sideshow road attraction? You know, like when you're on a wrong a long trip, and it's like stop by here to see the biggest burger ever. We're you're the here. biggest <laughs> burger ever. <laughs> Yeah, the fattest people in space. I, mean, I love that. And I will piggyback off of that. My theory was that Earth is maybe like a sex tourism stop. Oh, for the no. Is, you know, Two out of three Sam's are upset <laughs> by this, by the way. Because you have so many people having these encounters where they're like, I was violated, I was impregnated, I was so you know, of touched inappropriately. Hey, man. And I think that's how I Jesus got here. What? That isn't that how Jesus got was, here? Was Jesus an alien? Oh, I don't know. Oh, cause, cause this, oh my God. That's what happened to Ace Ventura's car, as we say around here. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> like, hello, guys. <laughs> okay, true story. Just to give you a little background while I'm nerding out uh, from the ages of what? eight to uh, eight to undisclosed eight to yesterday no from like eight to 13 i wore yellow underwear not the same pair every single day because i had read that it would uh keep me from being abducted by aliens why uh, what is it about yellow i don't know but i read it in a world weekly news when i was eight and it seemed like the source because they had an exclusive with bat boy and yeah. the alien that met bill clinton and i thought <laughs> these guys are credible journalists they know what they're talking about. Or uh, you didn't get a it works. So Jesus is Jesus' is immaculate conception was aliens. What, what you got I want to go back to this yellow underwear situation. Are you are you sure? Just throwing it out there, Tara back me up. Are you sure that maybe you weren't wearing yellow underwear just to like I could take a piss in here and nobody will know? <laughs> no. Hmm? Now, that, they just seem to sync up. Hmm. Now, here's what I'll say. I'll, I'll say this: If my name was Ben Slade and not Sam Slade, yeah, you'd have a case right there. I was never a bedwetter. But here's what I'll say: I was too hydrated. I was playing sports. It was never like if you do this. If I tried to do that in my early 20s when I was in Chicago doing comedy, it'd just be like neon green streets. It'd just be like a neon green zebra thing. But at the time, I like where your head's at. You're always on top of the case. Between the two of you, it's like uh, I've trapped myself in a true detective episode where somehow I end up being the yellow key. You made this happen. So I pee my pants. <laughs> uh, so the pandemic's over, ladies and gentlemen, if you're still on. Uh, no, but it worked, I thought, but I quit only to look cool in football. That's why I quit wearing them. Okay, you don't want to get me fun. Right, but I was terrified for like a, there was a good period of time where I was still scared to death I was going to get abducted. So I had a, I was very scared of aliens growing up, but I was scared because of Unsolved Mystery. Oh, yes. The, and the music, we would, I would watch that right before bed like an idiot, and then I'd go lay in my bed, and there was a window right by my bed, and so I'd just like stare at the sky and wait for it to happen. And like you're waiting for a alien to pop up, like by yeah. your window, or like see some flying saucer or anything. That's so funny, Sam. You said, it. "Have you seen that awful documentary, that fake documentary on Netflix?" Which which one? There's a fake alien Wait. one. They hold up, they hold up like a rubber alien in the window, and the guy plays it totally straight. He's like, "He's like, oh my god, no way!" And it's literally just like it's like holding, like here's our baby. It's just, 
Although what it's he's not so telling bad. you is we watched that for about a good half hour and thought it was real until like that happened. And we were like, oh my God, what have we been doing? I, I did not <laughs> And then I still got up, went, locked the front door. It was already locked. And then went and, uh, and, and Pete changed my underwear by total Yellow Riley underwear. Pete. <laughs> yeah, John, you should have stayed with the yellow and then you didn't have to get up and i'm a lakers fan too you think i'd figure it out uh lately it's just meant uh not flying is what yellow and purple have meant lately a lot of crashing going on with the yellow and purple lately not kobe bryant died in a helicopter <laughs> wreck yes uh, I, was just, I knew what you were talking about happy anniversary <laughs> helicopter crash too soon? No, I'm don't sorry. say that. You know what? So, that uh, was my 9-11, damn. I've just hinge cliffed myself, so uh, it was really great talking to you guys tonight. It's, uh, <laughs> bye. TMZ now reports Austin comedian Sam Narotti canceled for Kobe Bryant joke. <laughs> no one knew her, but now no one will. <laughs> <laughs> On a podcast hosted by another Sam that nobody knows, but says he's a Lakers fan. Ooh, what if they just cancel all the Sams? Oh my, then we have a movement on our hand. Are you are you left-handed or right-handed? Let's see how crazy this, uh, you left-handed? Yeah. I'm left-handed. I think we might, we might have, we might be setting up new Hydra. This yeah. might end up, this might be some Avengers. Is this some weird symbol that y'all are doing now? I don't like this. What was it? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It just tells the people in the other room that I'm gonna make a right turn. <laughs> It's a left turn. It's going. You got a swanky downtown hotel because that's how left handers name Sam Roll. You know, they just go with the best. Well, uh, yeah. you're a left handed Sam, and I've never been in a swanky hotel with you. No, we've had a pandemic going <laughs> on for, uh, <laughs> for quite some time. It just ended yesterday, in fact. So you have a reservation somewhere? Uh, you know, not everywhere is safe to reopen yet. Oh We're gosh. still waiting for folks to get the <laughs> shot. Uh, do you, you're a reservation. Is, right? What? Are you vaccinated? Yeah, I'm fully vaxxed. And rabies? Um, no, I still might have rabies, but- Now I'm canceled, see? Cause a woman of color, now I'm canceled. That's, easy, that's how easy it is. Just, all yeah, right. You don't even- Anyways, Tara, it's now the Tara show. How's it going? <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. I knew he'd cancel himself sooner or later. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> The long con. It's the long con. Oh, I don't even need to push this in any direction. He'll okay. Do it. Cool. He's back. He's back. Oh, hey, you're back. Oh, okay. hey. Uh, no, we do this training. He's learned. He's a better person now. Just yeah, like Republicans do. <laughs> What's the? What do you miss the most? Actually, we're going to ask you what we've asked every guest, uh, uh, including uh, an old aide to George W. Bush. Uh, when Trump left office, and he said. Uh, what what was the quote? I forget it. We'll return in another form. He would. Oh, yeah. What form do you think he's going to return as? Oh, a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best answer we've heard. Something that's a hashtag. It's definitely gonna be. <laughs> it would be hashtag hashtag, and it would get lost in the algorithm. And you have to say that I'm a hashtag now. Long I'm also a number saying. Oh, but he did come back as a blog spot or something, yeah. right? <laughs> He's like got a blog. <laughs> it's a word press, people. It's a word press, please. <laughs> it's, it's, a it's a Tumblr. It's a Tumblr. I put gifs. <laughs> Tumblr. I put gifs of all kinds of adult videos. Trump Shutterfly account is open. And what is Shutter? What Shutterfly? Shutterfly was like when he used to like post a bunch of pictures, like really RC, like back when you would have a digital camera. So just like white kids like breaking shit all yeah. in like sepia. You'd like was, have three hundred pictures on your digital camera, and then you what do you do with them? You upload them onto your Shutterfly. And everybody can go look. And there's no like rhyme or reason, no albums, nothing. It's she was a photo J nerd. Can you tell? She was a photo J nerd in high school. And and I've never heard of this. Sometimes you put them on your live journal or your MySpace. <laughs> okay. Yes. Actually, live journal is coming back. Oh no. <laughs> okay, but it's coming back in a new way. Um, because everybody on Facebook needs to have like 40 paragraph posts of crap. So live journal's back, you guys. I'm excited. I, 
probably the highlight of my day, y'all, every day is when I get on Facebook, just maybe some quick news. It's like, oh, hey, there's my uh, my niece and my nephew. I don't even have a niece. Why did I say that? Uh, but you're looking through, and then somebody's like, yesterday at H-E-B, and yeah. they do a Brando five all, days. Oh, yes. <laughs> Tell me everything. She does. Sam, if you do that, what's the what's the neighborhood gossip? Next door for? app. That's what I go to next door app for. Is yeah. Who complained oh. today? Oh yeah, I love watching the neighbors get mad. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you have awful neighbors? Oh, it's just it was always somebody. When I used to live in Austin, it was way more uh, chatty. <laughs> the next door app. But it was always something like, I saw a weird brown guy walking around and this guy rang my doorbell two weeks ago and nothing happened. Watch out. And it's like, all right. And also, they the video, like their ring cam. <laughs> and there was always people that lost keys in like shrubbery for some reason. There was like this huge thing down in South Austin a couple of years back where almost every next door app post was, I found a pair of keys up on this street in the bushes. I found also a pair of keys. I was like, what is this? You know, I don't know if you saw Tara looking at me. So I grew up in South Austin. I spent a time uh, hanging out there. There was there was a period where it was a fun thing to do. It's on your way out of a party, ask to get something out of a friend's car, take their keys, and while driving down Stasio or Westgate, just throw them anywhere <laughs> you were. So I don't know if this is connected. It's long-standing tradition uh, in South Austin. To be honest, I can't tell you how I know this information. I can't get into it. No, any other. I know what it is. I know. Well, people break it up to open their keys. I don't. I think it's. A, I think it's a tradition that maybe you were a part of and started of like bullying no. and hazing. I don't bully people. I learned. Uh, you know, when you start dating someone, and you know, like a good three, four months in, you start to like. Learn a little bit more about well, them, about if, their past. If I do this, will this help? Like the guy on, on Netflix? And I didn't learn until it was way too late that I'm in a relationship with a childhood bully. He was a bully. I was it. I was it. I was the nerd kid when I was little. I was I was wearing yellow underwear. How was I the bully? All these stories he tells me. He's like, yeah, we used to like uh, wait for this kid on the bus and like follow right. him off the bus and follow him home. No, whoa, 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 whoa. It's too late. I'm already judging. Like I am in the zone. I know. I know. Try. <laughs> I, know. The, I know. The last person that told somebody, he said that we put somebody in the trunk and told him like, oh yeah, we're just going to drive down the street real quick to get you off campus. And then like kept going over speed bumps and doing donuts. <laughs> Okay, the reason that one's okay, the reason okay, okay, the reason that one's funny is because the only person that was involved in that one uh, randomly showed back up into our lives after a decade recently and was like, "Hey, I talked to Jim," and I was like, "Who?" and they were like, "The Trump kid," and I was like, "Fuck!" See, he doesn't even remember his victim's name. Hey, no, it's a, <laughs> hey, it was a kid that had ripped us off over some pot. What? And you, so you were in photojournalism. Apparently, I was bullying everybody when I was what? crying on the school bus. So what kind of kid were you, Sam? Uh, She's taking pictures of all this trauma. I, I was kind of a big old loser kid. So was I. That's huh? what I'm trying to say. Oh. And so is she, but she was the photo J, because the thing is, if you got to take pictures of all the other big old loser kids, you felt like the king big old loser kid. I was never a loser. <laughs> what, you had self-esteem growing up? Come on. I, I did feel because I was, I was technically an only child, so I had plenty of self-esteem. Let me let me let me say this. And, and I had like late in life parents who had me like in their 40s. So it. I was just like the miracle that could not do any wrong. Wait, so <laughs> it, through therapy, through self-reflection, I, I own it. I don't deny it. Andrew I, Barry <laughs> Robot, ESPN baseball trainer. I realized that everyone had a different journey and I'm not, I don't hold it against anybody or myself. She'll return it a different form, <laughs> is what you're saying, Sam. Uh, so did you have siblings growing up or around, or that's a weird thing to ask, like I'm a cop? Wait, do I have what? Siblings or family, or were you just oh. like, out there in the world by yourself? I'm awful at interviewing folks. Oh, do you, are there more of you? Is that the question? <laughs> did, did they not use a con of your parents to do more of this? Yeah, did, they did. did. Folks I've got, a, is what I'm at. <laughs> I've got a I've got a couple of siblings, like a two sisters. 
Uh, older or younger? Uh, I'm the oldest. The other two okay. went to college and got like a proper education and are like respectable people in society. <laughs> All right, I'll be honest with you. We might have to start fighting crime together. I'm listening. I'm listening. We're both Sam. We're both left-handed. We both have same gender, young, two younger siblings. Mm -hmm. We got into the joke game, the horrible traumatic world of the joke game after being big old losers in school. And, uh, and, and our, you know, our kids' siblings are uh, all learned. Learned. Yeah. You know? We're disappointments. I can also wear a hat. Sometimes I wear glasses. Like, I got this. We're good. Okay, okay. I, let's let's really not do like a single that. white female thing. I don't want to get crazy here. We can't wear many all... outfits. Tara, back me up. Come on, man. I, I think we could do a lot with the matching outfits. So, I think well, we should really explore that. Denim, yes. Denim awesome. and bedazzle. I don't like wearing jeans anymore. <laughs> it's right. He, I think I've seen him wear jeans once in our entire relationship, and I was really weirded out all night. It's just uh, when strange. we were, when we were talking about fight crime, I was thinking more like like matching outfits, like Falcon and Winter Soldier, or like like X Men stuff, or uh, you know, like something you can get back to back and fight off ninjas. <laughs> you know, not. Not like not Sam doing a, a, a white white privilege Sam a single white female thing and walking around. For someone knees. that loves wrestling as much as he does and the outfits they wear and the amount of denim I see, I'm shocked to hear this. That's it. I'm tearing off the sleeve. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna get the outfits made and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. You know what would be hilarious? I'll message you his measurements. So here's what would be <laughs> Guys, that that. For Hurt and feeling stuff goes both ways in 2021, okay? <laughs> okay, guessing my sizes, that hurts me too. I don't have to guess. I'll just look at your I don't have a. Pants I don't even have a pair of pants that fit. None of us do. <laughs> None of us do. Not a thing anymore. Look like the camera all shaky. I, what I was thinking would be hilarious is uh, we'll come on uh, No Regurts, your podcast. It's all regurts. <laughs> uh, I... Coming on the show is already all regurts. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like no regurts, but it's all regurts because all of it's regurtful. Okay. All regurts. All regurts. Uh, uh, we'll come on there in the match. I'll, I'll wear the matching outfit and I'll I'll tell super serious stories and like some kind of weird matching denim sleeveless number <laughs> or whatever her I she comes up already. with after. She has who knows what kind of crazy drug fuel orgy at her fancy <laughs> downtown hotel now that the pandemic's over. I love it already. I'm on board. What do you mean? You just want, she's, she's always, in, if this pandemic had gone six more weeks, I'd be like Marlon Brando in a moo moo. And I'd be singing show tunes and trying to kiss Larry King. <laughs> Instead, I still have a fight against, I can barely stand up for myself against this bullying that's going on. Anyone watching? Doesn't. This was all an elaborate, like catfish type MTV show where we like confront you about your childhood bullying and bully me back. You've made it. You've what broken it through to the other side. And also, <laughs> okay, look, <laughs> look, we we want to take advantage of our uh, our time here on this show. This is a curious <laughs> program. We like to talk about news, and I like to shake the table. Uh, what did you think of the Oscars this year, Sam? Um. It happened, and that's a thing. That was my take, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's a hot button issue that we haven't covered that's uh, not at all related to our current conversation. Uh, so everybody just kind of stopped bullying the white guy for a little bit. And how do you guys feel about uh, about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck getting back together? Oh, my gosh. I hope he fixes his back tattoo once they get together. It's so ugly. It is what his is his beard. What is the tattoo again? I've only seen it like once. Sam, do you remember what the tattoo is? Was it like a giant phoenix type of thing? Yes, you're on right. On his it whole back. And it, yes. Yeah, I was like, look, up? I've had tattoos at a head shop and they're gross, but that he looked like he went to a head shop for his tattoo. And it's like, why, dude? You got money. Some like gross Bostonian. Okay, so all so my tattoo shop. <laughs> he let his so, buddy do a he he gave his buddy a favor basically. You're right. It was probably in a garage somewhere in southeast. Oh, <laughs> garage. <laughs> 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 
I got cleaned up and I got a tattoo kit. Let me try on you. Yo, how's that podcast going, bro? Oh, that sucks. I think everything is in the universe is like connected and uh, circular. Circular. And circles. So I feel circles. like no matter what uh, you know environment you're in, your circles can be small, your circles can be big, but you're going to get caught up in some throughout life. It was bound to happen. It's like a 20 year cycle. They were together 20 years ago. They're circling back around. And it's the, the right time in life for them to be back You're together. You're saying much like Jupiter and Venus aligning. I don't know it if it's going to last every forever, 20 but years. it's meant to last right now. And I'm here for it. Until I'm like here. Monday, we'll hear some <laughs> shit where he like walked out of some dinner hall cussing at people. We'll see. He's had a day. He had a terrible day. Dude, you don't know what it's like to be fucking number one, bro. I could have been Batman for like 10 more years. <laughs> now he's carrying J-Lo's purse. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> uh. So I, I don't know. What you stand? Are you, are you, people seem divided on Affleck. Are you pro or anti-Affleck since we're going to continue to, to beat up on the white dudes who scrape by by it for themselves? Go ahead. I, I appreciate mall rats because it's okay. mall rats. But also, I think he's one of those people that He's kind of shitty, so it's fun to kind of shit on him, you know? Yeah. Like, he's he's fun to beat up a little bit, verbally. Because he's shitty. Yeah. And when you're shitty and you're not just, like, doing charity work, when you're doing it because you got in trouble, it's, it's shitty. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think he does much to help himself, and that's where I have an issue. Oh, <laughs> it's he's like, a broken I, hand. Did you know, remember that tattoo that. we were talking about? He is yeah. broken. <laughs> I don't want to believe the tattoo like, is real. Ben, you're going to have to meet me halfway here. I want to love you. I want to root for is you. Is that what Matt David said? <laughs> I, I bet many times in their life. Yes. Well, you know, I still believe in Ben Affleck. I'm going to be honest, guys. I didn't appreciate when I saw the photos. I'm sorry, when Tara held the photos in front of my face like, <laughs> I like that. Look. <laughs> when I woke up and she was like, look at this shit. That's your Batman. And it was him being like, Carrying the purse. <laughs> and she cannot be bothered. And she wouldn't even look. Here, look. Like, here, oh, like here, 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 do the full bit. Here, there you yeah, go. Yeah, her sunglasses on. And she's bro, I got your plug there. from the restaurant, bro. She's like, sucks. get in the back of the SUV. Ben, go. get in the SUV. Let's go. All right, I'm going. I used to be Batman. I know. So no. enjoy that. <laughs> no one's banging in that relationship. It's really sad. Oh. But good for her. So much power on her end. Yeah, she lived her life out loud. And what's the secret? For it. Ladies, please enlighten me. What's the secret to Jayla's power? Why is it she can take Batman and put him just powerless? Well, because we know the butt. We know the butt. <laughs> the butt. Oh, y'all, yeah, neither one of you were going to say the butt. No. Okay, I'm canceled again. <laughs> Jeez. We get it. All right, for you, it's the butt. We got that. <laughs> no, is that, is that stripper dancer movie? Uh, oh, Hustlers? Yeah. She had a giant furry coat. That was cool. I don't know. Yeah, I want one. Probably Kegels. I think she No, you guys are still the best stop the direction. I mean, why? what is it that she's like modern day? Y'all told me not to say butt. Now you're saying Kegels. I think Taylor's pelvic floor is very strong, and that goes a long way for her. So she has, like, physical powers is what you two are telling me. Like, actual, like, fucking, uh, fucking powers. Maybe. Fucking powers. I, I, maybe. Gosh, I hope the folks from Showtime are watching tonight during this conversation, because I'm looking awesome. See, this proves that he's not into female empowerment. You talk about a pelvic floor, and he gets all upset. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, see, this is what happens. Now I'm getting rope a dope. I've got, time. I hope you are watching. It's like a couple of Elizabeth Warrens of color sitting on either side of me right now. I'm sitting here going, hey, I'm not supposed to say the butt. That's not where the power is. So I was thinking she's a confident, successful uh, businesswoman who's an entrepreneur and will fucking egg A-Rod if she wants to, whatever. But you guys are like, no, she, she will literally fuck you to death if you don't behave. <laughs> Probably. She looks like she won't take your guff, though. <laughs> like, yeah. she will slap you, backhand you with her. She'll probably turn her rings around before she slaps you in the mouth. Like, oh, she's got oh. that kind of attitude. That is kind of the vibe she I made. get, too. I think 
she is more masculine in relationships than people are giving her credit for. I think she takes oh charge. My. Oh my. I think she turns Batman. And A Rod, who was like, what? No. what was golden gloves, like a baseball all star, turns into holding her purse. Hey, hey, hey. First of all, being that we're going to see the Yankees play next week, I have to say this A Rod was never no man's man. A Rod was saying, never like, some. He was a very popular baseball player in yeah. baseball. like you know, is the master. So Liberace of baseball. So if she can get Batman and Mr. Baseball to hold her purse, like that no one else do what's going on. No one calls him Mr. Baseball. Stop <laughs> saying that about A Rod. <laughs> Taking time away from from Sam's point about uh both. I want to hear both of you guys pick another uh female a huge celebrity like that that has similar powers. Do you think? Sure. No, but one that you <laughs> guys not not. I'm gonna go put on the outfit from Turn Back Time if that's how you're gonna end. I'm gonna go put on Beyonce, the Beyonce, I guess. She's like the big Beyonce. one. You can't cut okay, her down. So now you guys, now y'all like racking your brain to come up with powerful women now that I'm all for it. <laughs> well, it's it just we never get asked this question. I know so many powerful white guys that I've always had an answer about. No, like a couple. Oh, Hillary. 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 We You're already saw powerful whole white guys. That doesn't count. <laughs> that's that's one, two, three, ding, 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 ding. Uh, Lady Gaga, she's one. Okay, hey, you said I know Gaga's like current, uh, but when you, you said Hillary, do you guys both think that the rest of Bill Clinton's life will be living hell after her losing? I think it already is. <laughs> okay. So that's, I'm going to take her silence and say, that's a yes, you're wasting my time at this fancy hotel. So we're going to move along to the next, uh, to the next I, topic here. She has can I, to say, let her can I say this though? I think their marriage is like a business deal. Like, I think they both went into it going, hey, let's, uh, let's hook up, be a power couple, but we don't have to bang each other, which obviously Bill yeah. told me like, did publicly. <laughs> Sam, Our, you're upsetting my robot. Alexa right got very upset just now. <laughs> Like you don't talk Paper about gas that. is not available on this device. You can use this feature with on the go devices. Alexa, off. Goodbye. We have the I 1992 think... Democratic primary Alexa <laughs> model. So if you she had a lot to say, she I hates Perro. I think you are right. I think, especially after Monica Lewinsky, that business deal probably got looked at. It's all over, Jerry. And they brought in some lawyers to kind of. Draft up some new language about and how the rest of like, our lives are going to go. He was like, "No, nah, Mr. President, Jared's Cray. He wrote that yeah. shit." <laughs> yes, he's fine. Enjoy your trip to Cancun on business. Yeah. With Jeffrey Epstein, he didn't have to go hang out with Jeffrey Epstein. That didn't help anybody. Oh, that was that Jeff. Uh, I. Yeah, she was a bad candidate, and he made stupid decisions. And uh, and now we've got look, folks, world's <laughs> back open. Focus up. I'm gonna send you a greeting card. Uh, I want to know between the two of you guys. I've been so. Here's the thing. I've had many guests on during the course of the Matt Gates scandal, and I've been trying to get Tara and whoever the guest is, whether it's uh, Showtime's Mark McKinnon or or University of Texas's Chris Clack or uh, award-winning. Authoring political consultant Jason Stamper, or uh, who else have we had? Well, I'm just gonna, oh, uh, me and Mark Norman talking about sharding on dates. <laughs> uh, uh, can you guys shit on Matt Gates tonight after we found? Age is where you go. <laughs> okay, he's gonna, she's gonna do Bill Maher. She's gonna Bill Maher me, I guess. Wait. Sorry, you guys cut out for a second. We're 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 shitting on Bill Maher now. No. No, so sorry. Uh, uh, Matt Gates, I think so. Yeah, I wanted you guys to shit on Matt Gates because today all the big information came out that the the right hand guy told him everything. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The silence is deafening here. Oh, I turn to the next generation <laughs> of Kamala Harris Americans, and they go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matt Gates got busted for pedophilia and everybody. Mmm. I just like how uh, Kamala in particular, we have not heard her comment on Matt she Gates because she's not in a position where she has other like white dudes to handle those bad white dudes for her and she doesn't have to waste her time with that anymore. She can just focus on what's really important. Oh, 
Okay, so Mama is going to be in charge for a while. Is what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? No, I think you're ready to get real Should comfy. Put my Kamala Harris mask on. <laughs> I had a Kamala Harris mask. I guess in, in like 20 years or so, it's going to be faux pas to rep Obama, isn't it? It's going to be no. Kamala Harris. Obama's timeless. Obama's going to be like a Abraham Lincoln. He's going to be like a Che Guevara. And nobody's going to know what he did. Well, hey, he was kind of Abraham Lincoln when he first showed up in 2008. So. He can keep holding on to that. Get him a top hat and it'll be cool. I think so too. Actually, let's revamp it. Let's do it like Samuel Jackson. He goes with a Kangle hat and that is how we remember <laughs> stately Barack Obama. <laughs> Great. And then like 20 years later, kids are going to be like, I didn't know Barack Obama was on the snakes on a plane. That's a great <laughs> thing. He says the F word a lot for a presidential. <laughs> I don't remember asking a goddamn thing. You're goddamn right, I did. I, uh, I think Donald Trump and uh, and Newt Gingrich and most of the Republican uh, Mike Pence would mass suicide themselves in public <laughs> if if Obama went out somewhere with a backwards cankle on in public. <laughs> Like Sam Jackson, I think we would see like a million Republicans just Obama proving like he really doesn't give a fuck. I don't care. Yeah. Let's yeah. Make it happen. Let's get a bill. Let's go to Obama in a in a in a kangle and let these guys know. We're gonna do a, a crowdfunding, GoFundMe. Let's let's get this done. Well, you know who we have to win over? We have to win over Michelle Obama, and I feel like she's gonna put an end to all this kangle bullshit. <laughs> we tell her that the proceeds go for healthy eating in like food desert areas. Done, Obama, uh, Michelle's on our side. Michelle's on our side. So I like ate carrots yesterday and I'm left-handed like the president and so is this Sam. <laughs> and yeah, Kangol's guy. Uh, I just wish you'd be open about smoking weed more often now that it's about to be federal. Joe, the most non-stoner uh, square guy in history is gonna sign the legalization bill here in a couple of years. And it's going to be awkward. It's going to be very happy days. It's going to be like Mr. C having, no one knows this reference. It's going to be like Mr. C letting uh, <laughs> Richie take ecstasy. Was that an episode? An episode? You guys don't remember that one? I didn't know ecstasy was around back then. Yeah, uh, yeah. Richie. Yeah, uh, so the Fonz has to get to a date, but he has dinner plans. And Richie doesn't want to cover for him, so he doses Richie with MDMA. <laughs> And he starts like, Dad, you're the best. Oh, and he's like, yeah, Mr. C, spend more time with the kids. And then he gets out and gets to go to his day. And by the time they come back, uh, uh, Richie's drugged everyone. Must have been a lot. 50, correct? <laughs> yeah. That whole thing was, didn't we do, didn't the American army do something like that? Like dose a bunch of people with like LSD or something? <laughs> Many, many, many oh. people actually with taxpayer dollars. Yeah. And uh, many people of color uh, for for no reason, just to just to go, hey, well, I wonder what will happen if we do this. And then turn, turn around and criminalized it for everybody. <laughs> yeah. As soon as as soon as anybody was having fun, when they were like, this is awesome. They're like, OK, shut that one down. I don't know. I don't, they used to have ecstasy over the counter in the 80s before they realized that it was a fun time. And I feel like I got like, damn. That's why everybody was break dancing. Yeah. Big hit, big hit. That's uh, why every millennial has like ADHD or like some sort of autism spectrum. I think that's why the 80s really why, messed us all up. That's why I'm Gen X, guys. No, he's not. <laughs> he's a millennial through and through. <laughs> it's, it's me, it's Ben Affleck, it's Matt Damon, uh, Kevin Smith. We're just, you know. Every other 50 year old man is this is us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're artists okay <laughs> uh hey did you go to you, you dropped kevin smith line did you get to go to movies the other day no i haven't been to a movie in like years even before pandemic times uh i didn't say movie that was hilarious oh. though uh <laughs> sorry i just went with what i thought i heard go on <laughs> No, no, no. We said uh, uh, Kevin Smith's restaurant was in town. Movies. movies. Oh, movies. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. There's yeah. one opened up in Austin or just opened they up? They did a pop-up at ACL Live for like a week, I think. Uh, but it was like 30 bucks a ticket. 
and that didn't include, I think, all the food either. So for eighty-five dollars, for eighty-five dollars, you could take a picture in front of a sign that said "We're closed." <laughs> I'll just watch the movie again at home. That's the same here. It's on yeah. all, all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? When we look back at this episode of Weirdos at Home and realize that this is where the whole show took off, and eventually you guys both pushed me out, and y'all <laughs> take over, like the fucking Today Show, and I'm just I end up being Pete Best of Nick Jokes. <laughs> Nobody gets that one either. The Hoda and Kathy Lee. Here we come. We're going to barrel right over here. And he's going to throw me out like a gin of bush <laughs> on the street. Don't worry, though. As soon as it's just me and Tara and we're doing the Hoda Kathy Lee thing, one of us gets to be drunk and the other gets to be passive aggressive. It's going to be all downhill from here. So it's, it's going to be the same way. You can be Gelman. Gelman? <laughs> Gelman? I'll be, I'll settle for Cody. No. Oh, Cody. <laughs> Adult coat. No, okay. No, 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 no. Let's, let's be serious. You have shows coming up, Sam. We've fucked around and wasted your <laughs> fancy hotel night enough and you played along. And will you would you be uh would you be able to uh to come back? Would you be down with coming back later in the summer, closer to the comedy festivals? Oh yeah. Absolutely. This is this is a lot of fun and I'll be in a more uh homey place. <laughs> She's like, I've got, I've got a nice suite. I'm trying to get my fuck on. Yeah. Like, get I'm all dressed up. Can you guys nerd it on out of here, would you? Well, before we let you go, do you have anything coming up that you want to plug or share? Yeah, um, I have a show at the Parlor Room on Rainy Street in Austin, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Yeah. Uh, if you want to show up, come to that. It'll be nice. And Rainy Street's a fun place to hang out, anyhow. And the world is back open. Yes. The world is open, but wear a mask. Please yeah, do. Yeah, for a little bit. <laughs> wear one. Hey, hang on a second. Uh, Weirdos at Home is Tara Brown. I'm Sam Slade. That's Sam Narani. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back next week. Thank you, guys.